Okay, here's a little tutorial on how to convert Newman projections into Fisher projections so that you can determine R and S configurations of the Newman projection. Now, if you start out with a Newman projection that's in its staggered form, then what you have to do is you actually have to convert the staggered form of the Newman projection into an eclipsed form. Okay. And the reason you have to convert the staggered into the eclipsed in order to then convert that eclipsed form into the Newman projection is because what I'm going to is what I'm going to show you in these pictures. For instance, here's a new a, an eclipsed Newman projection where we've got and I'm just going to draw it down here again. If I draw this eclipsed uh, Newman projection on the front carbon, you can see that I have a red, an orange, and a this is a purple group. And in the back, I have a white, a green, and a blue group in the back there. Now, if I'm going to convert this to a Fisher projection, what I need to do is to imagine myself looking straight down the carbon, the front carbon, back carbon bond. And so I'm going to be over here, like right about here in this picture, looking down the carbon carbon bond that I can't see. So if you can imagine yourself looking at the molecule like that, looking at it sort of sideways in this case, this is what you would see. You would see then the Fisher projection of that molecule where your Fisher projection would look like this. So we've got our orange, our purple, and our red, and then in the back here we've got our blue, our green, and our white groups. So these two pictures, this one, and then this one, are of that exact same molecule. So in order for us to convert then the Fisher projection, or the Newman projection into the Fisher projection, we then have to say, okay, I'm going to, in essence, take this molecule and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees to give me the Fisher projection. So if you can imagine doing that, this is what you're going to see. So notice that the group with the purple, red, and orange is pointing towards you. So that's the front carbon. So in the Fisher projection then, this was the front carbon. And the bottom carbon then in the Fisher projection was the back carbon. If we go back to this picture, the green, white, and blue groups were away from us on the back carbon. So to convert the Newman projection then into the Fisher, the first thing you have to do is to take the staggered conformation and make it eclipsed. Then when you make it eclipsed, imagine looking at it from this perspective. And if you do that, then you're going to get this Fisher, Fisher projection. You're going to get the red pointing away from you and the blue pointing away from you. And then on your left side, on the top carbon, you're going to have the purple and the orange. And then on the bottom, the back carbon, you're going to have the white and the green groups. Okay, So we can kind of imagine this molecule looking at it sideways in order to get this Fisher projection. But then that Fisher projection, this was the front carbon, this was the back carbon, and this these groups that were away from us, they were pointed towards the top, right? The red and the blue were pointed towards the top, 
in the other perspective. Okay. So that's how we would look at it with the models. So now let's take a molecule and, and work through its work through how we would get R and S configurations. So let's say I've got a CH3, an H, a BR, an OH, a CL, and maybe a CH2, CH3. If I want to determine what the R and S configurations are for the front and back carbons, I first have to move this, put this in an eclipsed conformation. So it doesn't matter which way you do it. Let's say I put the OH group, I'm going to eclipse with the methyl. I'm then going to rotate the back carbon to eclipse the CL with the BR. And again, rotating the back carbon, I'm going to, and I'm just going to write that here, we're going to rotate the back carbon. I'm going to put the ethyl group eclipsing with the hydrogen. And so if I do that then, and I'll do that down here, I'm going to end up now with an eclipsed conformation where the front carbon didn't move, the back carbon now has an OH, a CL, and a CH2, CH3. So now this is the eclipsed conformation of my original staggered. Okay, so that's the first step, is draw the eclipsed conformation. Now imagine myself down here looking at this carbon-carbon bond so that now my Fisher projection is going to look like this. So remember, the front carbon is the top. The back carbon is the bottom. So what, which two groups are pointing away from me in this perspective? The methyl and the OH. So that means the methyl group goes here, the OH group goes there. To the left on the top carbon, which was the front carbon, I have the hydrogen and a bromine. And then over here I've got my ethyl and my CL. So what all I've done is looked at this on its on the side. The top the front carbon becomes the top carbon, the bottom carbon becomes or the back carbon becomes the bottom carbon. Right? I suppose if you want to remember that B B bottom back become the same. So now once I have this in the Fisher projection, I can now just simply break up the two carbons. So if I look at the top carbon I'm going to have this as my Fisher projection. Bromine is, car is group 1. Hydrogen is 4. A CH3 versus a C with a CLO and another C attached to it. That's going to be 2. That's going to be 3. And so now I can go ahead and determine R and S. I'm going to switch groups 4 and 3 and groups 1 and 2 so that now this is counterclockwise, which means that the front carbon here is S. Looking at the bottom carbon, if I break that into its own chiral center, I now have chlorine, oxygen, carbon, and carbon. Chlorine number one, oxygen number two. This carbon has two H's and a C attached to it. This carbon up here has an H, a C, and a BR. The BR wins, so this group is number two. This group, wait, this group is number three, sorry. This is number four. And so now I'd have to, again, switch four and put it away from me, do the second switch, and again, going from one to two to three is now counterclockwise, so the, the back is also S, the back carbon and the bottom carbon in this Fisher projection. Okay, so that's how we would make that, that's how we're going to rotate to form the eclipse conformation and then look at it from this perspective to then convert it to the Fisher projection where again the front becomes the top, the bottom becomes the back, 
the two groups that are up in the eclipse confirmation are the groups that are going to be back pointing away from you. These other hydrogen and bromine and ethyl and chlorine, they're pointing towards you so they get the bold wedges. Okay, So hopefully that helps you as you go through some of the older homework problems and for Friday's quiz.